You are tuned in to the Next Gen Profits podcast, and we're here for you, your spiritual parents, Craig and Colette Toch. We're accelerating you, we're building you up, and today I've got some truths to share with you, Prophet. You're going to learn when to say it straight and when to speak in prophetic shadow. Mm. Now, a lot of prophets really know how to say it in shadow. <laughs> Um, so oh I hope I could break. I've got clear points for each, and I'm going to give you when you just got to say it straight and yep. when it's really a good idea to use type and shadow. Amen. Now, um, we're a next gen team, right? So these guys are always sending me memes yep. and videos and, and funny stuff. And <laughs> Nate once shared this, um, this YouTube video with me. And it was, I think it was a bit of a skit, but it was one of those where. When you're listening to a prophetic word and you have absolutely no idea mm. what they're talking about because oh they're goodness. talking in so much shadow and in riddle, it makes absolutely no sense. Perhaps you know this one, but the, the prophetic word in this uh, skit was something along the lines, and God is going to give you a car that you cannot drive and you are going to soar as an eagle without any wings. And it went on and on like this, and we were killing ourselves. Yes, guys, this is what Friday night looks like <laughs> at the ministry center with the Next Gen Prophets, them passing around funny videos and sending me memes on our chat. And we laughed so hard, but at the end of it, I said, yeah. you know, guys, <laughs> We all do that a little oh, bit. Goodness. We yep. come and give these prophetic words sometimes that make absolutely no sense or, oh my goodness, they're so generic like, and the Lord will open the road before you and he will take your hand because he's calling you into rest. And even though it's been difficult, I'm like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. when can we use some shadow and when can we just say it straight? Yes. And so uh, Craig picked out such a good scripture that I'm going to read for you today. Um, Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Mm. It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled <laughs> underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So I need mm. to ask you this prophet, are you well seasoned mm. or are you just salty? Hopefully, I get to bring a bit of balance. Oh, I'm laying it out this oh, yeah. week. I hope to bring you a bit of balance. But before I do that, for those of you listening for the first time, and for those of you who still haven't done this after listening a few times, go to nextgenprofits.org. I want you guys on my mailing list. Yes. It's for a number of reasons. Firstly, I want to connect with you. Secondly, I want to give you a free ebook. Listen. There's one thing you need to know about this ministry. We are givers. Mm. And when you get onto that mailing list, you're going to get the gift of prophecy for the next gen profit, full version, absolutely free with a course. Why? Because your process yes. is important to us just as it's important to you. Mm. So nextgenprofits.org, everything that's happening in our ministry, you're going to find all the details right there. Okay. So when do we say it straight? Mm. And when do we say it in a shadow? Because prophets, we need to learn balance. Thank you. Now, yes. this is when we say it straight and we shouldn't. When we're getting revelation. Yep. That's so true. When God gives you a vision. Yes. And you should be sharing the picture. What is it that we do, Craig? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think it's our Achilles heel as prophets. We, we try and give our opinion. <laughs> about what it feels like and what it should be. And, and we try and drag it out because this picture is so important. But guys, it should just be a prophetic word. It's a revelation that you can give. And if you can paint the right pictures, and if you can just give it to them in a correct, synced way, they will inherit that vision and it'll become theirs. You know that the danger about being too direct with words of wisdom and also of any vision that you get. As you know, guys, if any of you have read my book, The Way of Dreams and Visions, you share, I share a lot there mm. on um, types and shadows. We as prophets, we are built to yes. see in types and shadows. Yes. So if we're praying, we're seeing waterfalls, we're seeing rivers, we're seeing babies being born. Mm -hmm. And the biggest mistake that we can make is to think we're seeing it straight. Yes. Now listen to me carefully here because I've seen this done more times than I want to see it, is that there's a prophet praying for someone 
And in the spirit, he gets a vision. He gets a vision of a new car, an upgraded car. He Mm. sees first a small car, and then he sees a big car. And he goes, aha, God's going to give this person a new car. (laughs) So he opens his big old mouth. And he prophesies over that person. God says that new car is on the way. And this guy hops and skips out the meeting. He's like, woo-wee, baby, let's go. We're going down to the dealership. God says I'm going to get a new car. But that, you see, it was a shadow. Yeah. It was a shadow. It was a vision. And if you're getting your revelation through visions, through dreams, nine times out of ten, you guys, It's going to be a shadow. What God was really saying is that his ministry just got an upgrade and he needs to drive faster. He's been going too slow. He's been taking his time on the road that God put Mm -hmm. him on and he needs to amp up his ministry. He needs to take his leadership up a notch. He needs to study more. He needs to run harder. He needs to invest more. But no, instead of doing any of that, you know what he's doing? He's at the car dealership. And that's because a prophet didn't know the difference between a type, a shadow, and saying it's straight. Know your shadow, prophet. Oh, you know, (laughs) and I love what you're saying here because it puts a pressure on you, prophet, to actually become a specialist. You know, I like what you're doing here, Colette, because it's putting the pressure on these prophets to rise up and to be the specialist God's called them to. Guys, if you're prayed up, and, and you've learned it up. I'm going to, I know that's not a word, but I'm going to just use it because I'm <laughs> prophetic right now. And I just need to tell you when we know our types and shadows, when we know where we're coming from, I love what you said. Your, your dictionary is so important to so many prophets because when they come now to minister and they do get a prophetic word, they know what God's trying to say. Mm-hmm. Don't try and please the person, please Jesus. Because so many times you see this person and you see, okay, it's likely they want that new car. So I'm going to prophesy that, that you're putting your own thoughts and your own ideas in and you're not doing what the Lord is calling you to do. Oof. Guys, this scripture that I said, you are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its flavor. I know that it can be interpreted so many ways, but don't you understand that your type, your shadow that you share, those pictures Mm. that you get, that's the seasoning. Yes. That's the seasoning. Don't be salty. Be seasoned. Mm. Yes. Hmm? You can just share the vision. Mm. When is it time to share the prophetic shadow? When you receive a vision. The second time is when you prophesy. When you're prophesying, just prophesy the pictures that you see. Mm. And this is great. For those of you who are in a five-fold ministry team and are working with a teacher or a pastor, this is fantastic Mm. because you can prophesy the type in the shadow. A teacher will immediately pick it up. Would it surprise you that teachers find my way of dreams and visions symbol dictionary probably even more important than prophets (laughs) and that they are the best dream interpreters? What? Isn't prophets... That not that our thing? Listen, as prophets, we get the visions. That's right. We receive those downloads. But honestly, some of the best interpreters of dreams are teachers. Why? Yeah. Because they know the word so well. And so they recognize the type and the shadow. So mm. when you see that vision, when you get that prophetic word, just prophesy what you're seeing. Amen. Prophesy the waterfall. Prophesy the dry ground. Have you read the prophetic words of the Old Testament prophets at all, you guys? I have called you to tear down and build up. I mean, even the the Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of them prophesied in type and shadow. This is our strong point. Mm. So just prophesy what it is that you see. Don't try and add any of your ideas no. to it. And then thirdly, when you have to bring that tough word of correction, there are times where God's going to have you bring that tough word. We make the mistake as prophets to think that now we need to say it straight. Now I'm going to get on. I'm going to get on to when to say it straight without the type and shadow, okay? And perhaps it's surprising you because when you need to tell somebody straight they're in sin, you would think that now's the time to drop the pictures, right? Let's drop the flowers and the cars and the babies and the symbols and let's just say it, you sinned. But can I remind you of how Nathan dealt with King David? Exactly. And here comes Nathan who could get his head chopped off by the king and he uses a type and a shadow to pull out the same kind of sin that the Mm -hmm. king was in and he commits the king to a choice, a decision, and then says, but king, that's you. That's just what you said, Craig, at the beginning about the vision, when you share it, how they then inherit it. That's exactly what happened. Exactly. Because, you know, you prepare the way. And, Mm. and, And that's where you need to be so in tune with what the Lord's got for you, prophet. Because so often, if a person is needing a direct word, 
if you give a direct word at the beginning, you prepare his heart for the seed. Mm. Sometimes they're not ready. Sometimes they're a bit insecure. And by giving them a type and a shadow, you open the door for them to actually open their hearts to the Lord. Mm. You see, that's why we need to have this balance. We can't be one or the other. So we good. have to be in tune with what the Lord is trying to do in that moment. And if you come prayed up and you focused on what the Lord's wanting, it's so quick to step into either or. <laughs> so yes, the next time you get that word of correction and that hard word, prophet, why don't you just step in with your vision? Yeah. Why don't you step in first, let your prophetic word lead the way. And then as their heart opens, then by all means, you can say it straight afterwards. How many yeah. times have you tried to lead with the shadow? I mean, yeah. And when you didn't lead with the shadow, what happened? Probably got your head chopped off, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. You're not the first no, the last prophet that's going to be under that fire. That's why we have this podcast. We're yep. there to help you. We're with you all the way. We got gotcha. you. So then when is it time to really say it straight? Now, have you noticed that every single one of these podcasts, Craig and I, we're not afraid to say it straight to you. Mm -hmm. We don't talk to you in riddles or no. types or shadows. We're like, all righty, prophet, you got to shut up. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to stand up. Now you've got to sit down. Now you've got to dance to the left. We're you, like- Use some tact. <laughs> use some tact, yeah. We, we've been very direct with you. Why? Because we're preaching Yes. and we're teaching. The time to be direct is when you're preaching. Now prophets, why do we mess this up? Why does a prophet get up there and they're type and shadowing their entire message that you sit there going, I wonder what he really means. <laughs> What does he mean by that? Or they just share this, this lengthy allegory or this dream and you're like, and your point is what now? Mm -hmm. Because when you're preaching, you're preaching to an audience. If you use shadow when you should be straight, you're ending up becoming that YouTube video we were all laughing at on our Friday night oh, and so passing sick. around. It's yeah. like... You need to know when to just share the vision. Mm. And, and when you're preaching, look, uh, yes, of course, if you get a vision, you can share the vision with them while you're preaching. Mm. But then you need to give it to them straight afterwards yes. to say, this is what the vision means. Don't leave it up to interpretation, especially when you're preaching to a full crowd. Don't leave the interpretation up to them. Say it to them straight. Now, the second time to say it straight, and I'm, I'm flipping the scripture on you, is when you're the leader. Remember I said share in a type of shadow if you have a tough word to bring. Yes. But say now you are the pastor of the church. Say now you are the elder and you have got a revelation from God that somebody in your congregation or somebody in the team is living in sin or has done something that is completely unacceptable. Now is not the time to type and shadow it. Okay. Mm. Because they will walk away from that meeting going, man, that was a good meeting with pastor. I wonder what he meant. Mm. And they will carry on sinning. They will, they will carry on sinning because you did not say it straight and you did yeah. not make it clear. If you are in a leadership position, say it clearly. Say it with tact. Mm. Say it nicely. But now is a time to say it straight. The third time that it's time to drop a little bit of the type in the shadow is when you're counseling prophetically. Now, mm. if I'm ministering to someone, this especially relates to inner healing. Yeah. Um, you will find yourself flip-flopping between the shadow and saying it straight. So when do you say what? It's like this. When you have a vision, just share the vision with the person. Mm. But when the vision is a bit obvious that you're getting a word of knowledge of a very specific time in their lives, you need to say it straight. Yes. Um, I'll very often, I've shared this before, when I'm ministering to somebody, I'll see them at a certain age or I'll see them in a very particular situation that mm. evoked fear, in which case I'm not just going to share the vision, I'm going to say what happened to you when you were five. Mm -hmm. I have this vision of you being very afraid around about the age of five, what happened to you during this time. I'm not just going to share the vision and leave it yes. i'm going to follow it through with being straight now as i'm sharing that i may see that person in a prison now i doubt very much they were in an actual prison i'm not saying mm -hmm. that it isn't true <laughs> yeah. but then i know oh it's time to type in shadow i'm seeing a prison they feel like they're captive something bound them they have a demonic bondage now i'm going to switch back to counsel to say i believe that you were imprisoned with a demonic bondage and I'd like to help you break free today. Mm -hmm. When you are preaching, when you're the leader mm -hmm. having to give direction or when you're counseling prophetically, 
there's only so much you can do with type and shadow. And yes. then, guys, you just got to say it straight. Mm. But we mix them up, don't we? We do. We do the type and shadow when we're preaching. And then when it comes to prophesying or getting revelations, then we yeah. want to say it straight. Let's draw these boundaries clear. That's true. It's like, prophet, please don't make the mistake. So many others do. It's like, if you get that in counseling, Jesus wants to heal them. You know, too many times, I've, I, I, people we trained, they, they use the, the types and shadows and they never healed the person. Whew. And that's where this is a mistake that you need to break out of. If you are in a counseling session, God wants them healed. God wants them, when they leave you, they better felt Jesus and they better feel better. <laughs> they better feel better. I like that. They better feel better, prophet. Mm. Are you seasoned, well seasoned, and a little bit spicy? Or are you salty? Well, you're my next gen prophet. You and I both know you're a little bit spicy. Yep. That's why we like each other, right? <laughs> Come and visit us on nextgenprophets.org. If you're not on our mailing list, get on our mailing list. And if you are on our mailing list, I have an important question for you. Are you tribe? Mm. Join our tribe. You want to stay connected. You yes. want to be part of this move God has birthed in the earth, this prophetic revival that we're seeing everywhere around us. You want to be part of that? You want to be on the cutting edge of that? Join our tribe. We believe in you. We're here for you. And we're leading you along the way. Love you and see you tomorrow.